celebrate Solomon and Anjali's wedding this day. Isn't this wonderful? It's great that we're gathered here in support of them and their love that brings them to this moment today. And I know that the love of you all is part of uh, what we're doing here today as they make promises to one another and commit their lives together in front of you and of course in front of Almighty God. And so we surround them with our support. Anjali, Solomon, we're here for you this day and we're praying for you this day as we celebrate with you the love that brings you to this moment. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Alice Delane. I'm the minister here at St. John's, and so it's my great privilege uh, to conduct this service today. And, uh, and there are a few, a few things that I need your help with uh, today. Uh, the first thing that I need your help with is, is to smile. You need to smile throughout the, so much that your, that your mouth muscles are practiced for the photos later on. I don't want you in pain later on. You need to warm up your mouth muscles now. The other thing is, that uh, we're going to sing, at the moment we're going to sing a hymn, and uh, if you don't have the words, and some of you have got the words on WhatsApp apparently, but if you don't have the words, you can find them in this book. It's an old fashioned um, piece of technology that we use here at St. John's, it's a book, and it's number 68 uh, in the book. So uh, if you need the words, it's 68, and we're going to sing three verses, confusingly we're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 5. Right, so uh, I'll let you work out why we chose those verses and not the other ones. Uh, but we're going to sing that uh, in, in a moment. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven, number 68. Because you are faithful in your love for us. And we ask that you look mercifully upon Solomon and Anjali, who have come seeking your blessing this day. Let your Holy Spirit rest upon them so that with steadfast love, they may honour the promises they make this day. Where the wine had come from. 
but the servants who brought the water knew. He called the bridegroom and said to him, People always serve the best wine first. Later when the guests are drunk, they serve the cheaper wine. But you have saved the best wine until now. This was the first of all the miraculous signs Jesus did. He did it in the town of Cana in Galilee. But this, by this he showed his divine greatness and his followers believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Nisha. When I was uh, a, a small person, a small child, I can remember imagining what it might be like if the Queen came to our home for lunch and what we might do if the Queen came to our place for lunch. At our place, my parents' home, we had a silver tray that used to sit uh, on the sideboard, facing, you know, sitting sideways, facing out. We never used it. And I imagined in my childhood innocence that uh, if the Queen came to our home, we would use that tray. I'm not sure what for, but boy, we would use that silver tray that sort of stood there looking important uh, and valuable uh, to a child the day that the Queen would come. And I, as we hear the story of Jesus on the special day, the special wedding celebration, we might imagine what is it that we would do to make an occasion special? What would we do if God's own son came to our wedding celebrations. How would we make sure that it was super special, as special as we could make it? What would be the things that we might try to do? We might have a glimpse of some of that today as Anjali and Solomon celebrate their wedding today. We will be doing things that are very special. And we do that deliberately because this is a very special day. Perhaps if, uh, if you're a bit like me, uh, you might forget that, that actually uh, in our attempts to make things special, we... and the second point from this story I think is that what Jesus is doing is far more than a miracle of catering of the the miracle among the beverages, as it might be described, pro producing fine wine. If it was simply a story of, of great catering, I suspect that that would have been a story that would have been long forgotten. But here in this story, at this wedding on that day, Jesus does something that points really to what the whole New Testament of the Bible is pointing to. That is that God's presence is with us in joyful moments of celebration, in tough times, in challenging times, in uncertain times, in wonderful, clear moments of love and tenderness, God is with us. This is the central message of the Bible. God has committed to us, to our material existence, to our everyday lives, to bless us, to love us, love us to the point where we're changed, where we're transformed, we're not remaining the same. To take the story that we've heard that Nisha read, one clever writer observes that the conscious water knew its creator God and it blushed, it blushed. To know God's love is to know transformation, is to know ourselves to be made different. And we shouldn't be afraid of that. God is good. We shouldn't be afraid of change and new beginnings and taking a new footstep in a journey that we haven't taken before. Solomon and Anjali, that's very much what you're doing today. A new journey begins this day. And we're here with you and we know that God is with you and will bring into your lives the joy of transformation. And we know this because we, we hear about the witness of those who saw God's Son walk this earth to show us who God is, to reveal to us what's important to God. And so we can say with 
clarity and with conviction how much God's love is with you this day and how much we can join in in celebrating that love with you. Because there's one characteristic that comes shining through in this story today of that wedding that Jesus went to, and that's about a characteristic of God that is generosity. The generosity of God is on display here. Although that wedding day, the wedding itself was hosted by those who invited Jesus as a guest to that wedding. In the story, Jesus reveals himself to actually be the generous host of humanity. And as the story of Jesus' life carries on through his life and his death and his resurrection, we see that God offers his own son to the world, a gift of love, the greatest gift of love the world has ever known. And this gift is done, is given not to outdo our own expressions of love, but to infuse our expressions of love with divine significance. The gift of love in Christ is not to squash our humanness, but to transform it into what it was always meant to be. Not to render us passive recipients, but to empower our own expressions of generosity. Generosity back to God, the giver, and to one another. It's in the person of Jesus that God shows the love for us and for our world, and that we are invited to show that love back. I, Anjali, give myself to you, Solomon, to be your wife, to live together in the covenant of marriage. Excellent. Now, I said that I need all your help today, didn't I? And so I want to invite you all who are here to express your support verbally for these two. You're all here physically present, which is awesome. And I'm going to give you the opportunity to also express your support for them. I'm going to ask you a question. And if you affirm this question, if you agree with this question that I'm going to ask you, I invite you to respond, we will. And you can choose the volume at which you say we will, and I, there's no limit on the volume, all right? So there's no limit as to how loud you want to say the words we will. Here's the question. Will you, the families and friends of Solomon and Anjali, who've come to share in their wedding day, do everything you can to uphold them in marriage? We will. Thank you. Solomon, I invite you to say your vow to Anjali. I, Solomon, take you, Anjali, to be my wife, and I promise before God and these witnesses to be your loving and faithful husband in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, as long as we will shall live. I, Anjali, take you, Solomon, to be my husband, and I promise before God and these witnesses to be your loving and faithful wife, in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, as long as we both shall live.
Lord God, by your blessing, may these rings be to Solomon and Anjali symbols of unending love and faithfulness, reminding them of the covenant they have made together this day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So Solomon, I want you to take Anjali's ring and to place it on the hand. Hold it there.
holding fast together through laughter or tears, sunshine or storm. And help us all to live with grace, so that supporting one another we may serve anyone in need and hasten the coming of peace, love and justice on earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. May the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be on us all this day and always. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the married couple, I invite you to stand.